Okay, uh, so um, my name is Lauren. Uh, I am a learning designer with Moodle HQ, and I want to share with you today the top 10 tips, tricks, hacks that we're doing with clients all of the time on the learning design team over at Moodle US. Um, so I am going to go really fast today because I'm sharing 10 things, um, but and I'll put this slide up at the end. I have a document that has all of these with tips, you know, uh, documentation links and things, so follow up documentation for you. So as a learning designer, as a lot of you are doing, I'm constantly listening to challenges and problems that clients have and then suggesting solutions to those challenges and problems. So that is how I have structured this, these top 10. So first problem, uh, I want users from different tenants to be able to share courses. Usually this is because I want to create one course and then use it in lots of different tenants. So I want shared courses, but of course I don't want users to see each other, et cetera. Um, many of you are probably already using this one, uh, but you know our solution here is usually to create a category with those shared courses, alter the permissions on that category, allow authenticated user, add authenticated user to that category, and then you can use courses from that category across tenants. So you can have shared courses, updating a course in one space, having those updates uh, appear all over for all users is usually the way that the client um, presents that to me. Some tips on this one. Use separate groups in your courses so that the users are truly separate from one another. Um, also, removing the permission to view participants from the student role at the course level, another really good way to make sure that no one ever sees anyone that they should not be seeing. <laughs> so there's your tips for that one. Next problem. <laughs> I want to send users direct links to courses, but I want to make sure they're routed through their tenant. This is very important to one of my clients. So the, uh, for this one, and again, we, there's a document for you with this, but it's, it's just adding this and tenant equals to the end of your course URL. So if you're sending an email communication or some reason you are sending this you know, direct course URL to, to the uh, client, adding the and tenant equals and then the tenant ID will be sure that they are routed through their tenant. So again, you go to the document for that one, but there's that tip. Just add that onto the end of your URL. No, nothing more for that. <laughs> Next problem, the messages that my site sends out don't seem like they come from me. They're just the automated messages. Those can obviously be customized in the language pack. However, I think that when you are creating a dynamic rule, so this one for example, dynamic rule to allocate users to programs, adding a notification to that dynamic rule and habitually doing this is a really, really, really wonderful and easy way to make sure you're personalizing the messages and even branding the messages that go out from your site. So some tips. Use those placeholders that are right there in notifications to further customize. And then also know that the multi-language content filter works for these notifications. So you can even send communications to users in their own language that they have selected on the site. It's just using dynamic rule, action, include a notification. You probably want to disable some of those default system notifications that go out so you're not spamming users. Okay, next problem. It takes me, so this is a site admin or a manager problem. It takes me so long to go where I want to go on the site. You know, I have to click site administration, I have to go to users, like it takes me a long time to get to the places that I always need to go to on the site. I am a huge fan of what I have come to call usable reports, creating a usable report. So you know when you're building a report in Report Builder, you can have the course full name or the course full name with a link. If you create reports at, for yourself, <laughs> you know, as a site admin or for your managers and you're using these link um, columns for, for the data, then 
when you're accessing this report, you're able to go directly to that place. So this is just a little trick, but to think about creating a report that is usable for you as a site admin or for those of you, you know, you have working on your site. Some tips on that one. Of course, just be sure to specify the correct report audience for that because that's a very specific report um, that you're making that is probably not for all. Um, and then using the report block for easy access. So, you know, maybe putting this as a report block on the dashboard, but that that report block has permissions where only site administrators or only managers, whoever it is you're building this for, can access it or see it. Okay, problem. I want data dashboards. We hear this all the time. Obviously, there's a lot of follow-up questions. What data? What do you mean by data dashboards? This can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. And I was really excited by a lot of the things Emilio was talking about earlier. So, um, and Emilio mentioned this as well. Uh, I really love using a custom page with a series of usually report blocks to put a series of reports on that page for users to use as their data dashboard. Whether this is something that is for stakeholders who need to come in and look at data about users across the site, or as we'll talk about in a second, whether this is uh, for an individual learner to go in and see reports about themselves all in one spot. Uh, some tips on this one. You can use a text block, of course, to bring in anything else that you want. So if a report block alone is not enough, or you're integrating with something else or want to bring in some other information, text blocks give you that power. Um, depending on your site configuration, many different factors here, your reports may need to be created in the shared space. So be sure that you're testing this. If you are doing this and creating these custom pages with custom reports, just make sure you're testing with actual test users to make sure that you have the visibility configured as you need to and make sure that your custom page uh, audience and your report audiences are in alignment. This is obviously all just workplace best practice, but keep this in mind and test with an actual test user because sometimes this can be tricky. We have multiple layers of permissions with this one. Okay, problem. I want a report that shows user their own information. And this is usually something like, this is usually said in a way, I want a transcript. I really want to show users a transcript. That's usually how I hear this one. This is my absolute favorite thing about <laughs> Report Builder. So in Report Builder, there is a condition under users, and the condition is, relation to the report viewer. And if you set this condition to themselves, then you are setting up this report so that when the user sees this report, they are seeing it as themselves. It is a simple and complicated concept. <laughs> but this is so powerful in creating the reports that you're looking for if you are trying to create a data dashboard that is user facing and shows something like a learning transcript or you know learning progress. Tips on this one. When you're building your report, really think about it from the perspective of the user you're building it for. The default configuration of the report for this type of report is probably not going to work great for you. You know, enrollment type like that doesn't even make sense <laughs> to most of our users. So don't include that on the report. It will just be confusing excess information. So just kind of put on that hat of the user. What do they want to see on this report and how do they want to see it? Do you want this report to be those live links with the link or do you want it to be static? Consider all of those as you're building the report. Make sure your report audience for this is set to all users because this is a report that you would want all users to have access to so they are seeing their own information. Next, problem. <laughs> I want to easily give users access to lots of courses and I don't want to do a lot of manual work. I don't want to go in course by course and configure self-enrollment, whatever it is. I want this to be easy and I want this to be fast. I think a program is a really, really excellent solution for this and works really well for some organizations. So 
For example, I have a lot of organizations that have webinars, they have courses, they have a hundred courses of every, you know, webinars that they did all of that year. They want to easily give all users on their site access to those webinars. And so I have them create a program, toss all of those courses into that program, and then we have a dynamic rule that says if you're not allocated into this program, allocate users into that program. It means that when those users log in, they see, you know, 2023 webinars, they see all of those courses, they can access whatever they want, but it was very little work on the client's part. Um, I love that a program does not actually enroll a user into the course until they click into the course. And when I talk with clients about that, I say, you know, it keeps your data clean. Because if you want to see how many users are actually accessing the courses, you can see that. I, I mess this up all the time. Make sure <laughs> your program completion is set for main completion all in any order, right? Because there's no sequence to this type of program. Um, this one's really simple, but related. You know, my programs are just a mess. I just dumped a hundred courses into them and now it's a mess. <laughs> the solution here is obviously sets. Sets are really powerful. So you could have 2023 20, webinars, but then you could organize those thematically in sets. And I have clients doing this with hundreds and hundreds of courses in a program and then many, many sets of courses. Uh, tips there, you can have, you know, each set can have its own completion logic. So you can get really complex when you're using sets within programs. Um, this one, I'll go really fast because it's on the roadmap, but it's not there yet. I want to, I want users to be able to self enroll into programs. That is such a common request. I'm so excited that it's, it's coming. Um, the way that we're usually doing this right now, okay, you want to know? <laughs> so let's say you have a Moodle basics program that you want users to self enroll into. Create what I call a portal course. Just create a course called Moodle Basics Program Enrollment Course and make sure self enrollment is enabled on that course. Then create a dynamic rule that says if the user is enrolled in the Moodle Basics Program course, allocate them to the program. Woo! Portal course. Okay. Don't worry. I have this in the document for you with, with even more steps. <laughs> um, so you need a way to display the self-enrollment course, the portal course, obviously, however you're kind of displaying courses. You might be on the dashboard of filter codes, whatever it is. We can talk more about that. Um, and then here's a really important tip. Consider a dynamic rule that will then unenroll the user from the portal course because you don't need it anymore after that and it will clutter up their My Courses page. Okay. So this is our last one. Problem. <laughs> I just want to automate so many things. I don't want to do manual work. I need the system to be doing a lot of work for me. <laughs> uh, this is uh, just sort of my catch-all, if you will. Um, but between these two pieces, custom profile fields and dynamic rules, you can automate so many things on your Moodle site. Um, so if you have users somehow selecting information about themselves, preferences, whatever it might be, you can then put them into things and places or assign them things <laughs> that you need to assign them. I know that one is vague, but I wanted to end with it because I think that it is just the biggest net and has the most potential for letting you shortcut and automate processes on your site. So dynamic rules and custom profile fields. So <laughs> that's it, 10. I hope at least one of those is something that you could use. Um, I have that back up there for you. The document goes into some more detail, links to Moodle Docs where needed, um, and then would love to answer any questions you have about this or anything else. So thank you all very much. 